Hello and welcome to Universal Combat CE Let's Play Poorly. And for this one we are pretty much going to be playing pretty poorly. Uh, largely because I've played it a fair amount, like maybe an hour or so. Uh, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, still don't really know what I can do in the game. I know vaguely how to play. But, you know... Whatever. Uh, you may have seen the Let's Play Briefly episode on this. Um, and I've decided I'm going to go ahead and start making an in uh, sort of a intermittent series on this where we just kind of screw around and see what happens. Uh, there's not going to be any narrative consistency here. I'm probably going to die quite a bit. And we're just going to play around with it. So if that appeals to you to watch that sort of thing, feel free to come along for the ride. If you'd rather have something a little bit more structured... Uh, I recommend trying someone else uh, on the in the YouTube uh, ecosystem. Uh, I know that there are some playthroughs for Battle Cruiser Millennium, uh, which is essentially this game but with a slightly older UI. Uh, there aren't really any playthroughs for Universal Combat except for Lazy Chance Tutorial, so uh, there is a big gap there. But Battle Cruiser Millennium does have uh, gameplay that is so close to this, other than the interface. That if you watch that, you're getting roughly the same experience. Um, but anyway, here we go. We're going to call ourselves Archibus X. Our asset is going to be... No, that's not it. I'm going to hit return here. We're going to put ourselves down here and call ourselves the Ark. How's that sound? I think that sounds great. Now, uh, I should mention that I do have this game... I do have my touch portal set up for most of the commands in this game. A few of the commands I know uh, the hotkeys for, but most of them are just on the panel. Um, I'm going to try, if I can remember to, I'm going to try to do most of my interface interaction with my mouse. Even though I would normally prefer to use uh, hotkeys and so forth, it doesn't look as... It, 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 it's harder to follow along in this game because this game is almost entirely like hotkey and it, it, it just it, it's hard to, to track if you're just using the hotkeys. So I'm going to try to use the mouse as much as possible um, because you can get to most of the things that way. And then that way, if you are, in fact, tolerant enough to follow along, uh, you'll be able to see kind of what's going on a little bit more easily. Um, if anybody watching this has played the game in the past and is watching roughly around the time that these are getting released, I would certainly welcome any advice uh, or complaints or raging at my terrible gameplay. Uh, because this is a game I do want to learn a little bit more, because uh, it's uh, it's a fair amount of fun. So we are Archibus X. Our asset name is going to be the Ark. We are a male character. We are going to be a Terran guy here. Uh, we're going to be military. We could do any number of so Terrans. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other options here, uh, but we're going to do Terran, uh, and uh, we have these different casts: military. Or Earthcom, mili Insurgent, Military, Explorer, and so on. Military is your basic bog standard. We'll start with that. Maybe down the road we might switch to something else. Uh, you kind of have access to fairly every, uh, just about everything, except that your 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 ship is different and so on. We're going to be in the career of Commander. Uh, these two pilot ones uh, are, uh, you're just in fighter craft, and the rest of these are, I think, first-person shooter type guys. We're launching in, in going to launch in Earth here. Uh, your options are based on where your what your uh, race is, and we're launching from Galcom HQ. We don't have a mission zone because we're just doing the roaming uh, the the roaming game, and we have a couple of options here for assets. We have the heavy, heavy carrier, which is what we're going to what we could start with here. The super carrier, which looks freaking awesome. Uh, there's a super cruiser. They all look pretty awesome, honestly. The heavy cruiser. We could do an armed transport or an unarmed transport. We don't want to do an unarmed transport as a military commander. We're going to do with a heavy carrier. No. Uh, heavy carrier? Is that what we want? Or do we want a super carrier? Which one looks cooler? Eh, heavy carrier it is. Uh, and we're going to have uh, the regular asset default loadout. I don't think we have options here. And the player gear, uh, probably not going to land in this thing. Uh, we're going to probably get on, get on on foot, but we have options here for different kinds of uh, gear. 
we're probably going to die long before we ever get to do anything interesting. That tends to be what happens to me. Uh, which is fine. We'll just, you know, restart and continue. We're not trying to win this game. We're just kind of just playing it. Uh, so we're going to accept that. We're going to do the roam and explore scenario. And this is just basically saying completely re freeform and designed to be role played using your imagination. So there's no, there's no nothing. You're left to your own devices. And that's basically what we're going to do. Uh, the possibilities for each race, cast, and career combination are limited. As such, what you can do is limited only by your own imagination. Good luck, Commander. Yeah. So this game, uh, as I mentioned in the Let's Play briefly, is made by a gentleman named Derek Smart. Uh, there are uh, There's a lot of information about this fellow online, and I urge you to just ignore it, because whether it's true or not is irrelevant. What matters is the game, and... The game is, uh, as I say in the Let's Play briefly, uh, the product of a monomania. Uh, this guy has made this game in iterations after iteration after iteration, perfecting his craft, perfecting the connection between what he's created and what's in his imagination. And it, it shows. It shows. It is exactly what he wants. It plays the way he wants it to. And you, you either accept it or you reject it and if you accept it you're gonna have a great time so here we go i know only a few things about how to play this game quote unquote efficiently uh so i think what we're gonna do is uh do just th that part of it that i know th to do and then go from there so we're gonna go ahead and uh slow down to a stop that's not the button i want Disengaging thrust profile. All right, that was the zero key, but for some reason the zero key doesn't actually zero me out, so I'm going to use my WASD key here, the D key, to, to bring myself down to zero. There we go, VTOL. Okay, now, uh, what have we got going on here? First thing I need to do, I'm going to go into my systems here, and I'm going to go into logistics, and I'm going to turn off... Uh, launch control and transporter control. That way, uh, if someone gets on board, if an enemy gets on board, he can't escape. Uh, he definitely can't steal one of my shuttles. That's that's going to be important. Um, our mineral storage levels right now, uh, radine, which is our for reactors to, to, to do flying and shit, is a thousand. Our shield is plutonium. We have 99. We had 100, and it's slowly depleting. And cloak is iridium. We aren't probably going to get around to doing any cloaking. Uh, we don't... I don't think... Do we even have it up turned on? Do I even... Uh, let's actually turn off the cloaking system. Um, that takes iridium, but we, we are not going to be likely to use that. So what we need to do is we need to get some radiant as soon as possible. Because that's going to go down. Same thing with plutonium. Uh, so, uh, what else are we going to do? I think from here, uh, oh yes, that's the other thing. The other thing that was recommended is we go to crew, we go to our marines, and we set some of these guys to prep for combat uh, so that they can be ready for uh, being um, for, for being boarded. So we're going to set five of these guys to that. Now, one thing to note, uh, if I go to logistics, if I go to cargo... I think, I think, this if this is right, whenever they prep for combat, they use a combat kit. Or something to that effect. Like, th there's a certain amount of supply that gets used up by prepping for combat, which is why you kind of have to actively choose to do that. Um, Alright, so, we're going to go back to tactical here. Now we're going to look at our launch options here. This is our uh, fighter craft. So they, they are all currently, uh, actually if we go to the crew you can see here, they are all, all of our pilots are already set aside for our fighters, which is fine. Uh, but what we really want to do, is it loadout? Where is this? Is it on shuttlecraft? One team. Yeah, there we go. So we can actually set some people to be the shuttlecraft pilots. We don't really need them to do that right now, but when we do want to, if we ever get around to that, if I ever figured out what to use them for. Uh, I mean, I know what to use them for, but I've never had the opportunity to, so, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Um, we go to team here, and we can just set a Marine to do that. Now, one thing we should note about these guys is that 
They have a life factor, which is basically their hit points, their fatigue factor, their and their artificial intelligence and their hunger. As the hunger go, when the hunger gets to a certain point, they will eat and they will eat uh, Nutripax, uh, which is another thing that we have to keep in stock, but not as much as we have in actual stock right now. So one of the recommendations is to sell those down so that we can get a little bit of money. Artificial intelligence is basically how good they are at their jobs, which goes up over time. And fatigue factor is basically whether or not they need to go to sleep. If they need to go to sleep, they'll go to off-duty. So we need to make sure that we have enough Marines who are well rested so that they're not going to cause problems for us down the road. Okay, so let's log off here. Oh, now, the first we're thing we're going to do is delay. we're going to go... Uh, yeah, cloaking system is offline. We don't have our fighters launched and we can't launch them right now because launch control is turned off. That's fine. One thing we're going to want to do... Oh, I forgot to do this. We need to go into the uh, uh, command, the system logistics, I think. Um, and we need to go to tactical, loadout, command, loadout, mines. We're going to take our mines off because apparently mines aren't really super useful, but we can sell them. So that's what we're going to do. Acknowledged. Now, we're going to go over here and go and take our command craft. And the plan is to fly to a friendly, we're gonna to fly to Galcom HQ. Where is Galcom HQ? We're heading over there now. It's not too far because we just we just left from there, but now we're gonna go back and sell off the stuff that we don't need. So there, there is Galcom HQ over there. That is gonna take a minute. So instead of going that way, why are you going in a weird way? Let's can I make you can I make you go a little bit better? Fly to Galcom HQ. There we go. Sometimes you gotta gotta goose them a little bit. Okay, so now that we're doing autopilot. Oh, some baddie is coming into the system here. This night star. It's gonna be here in a minute and a half. You know what I'm gonna do? Ah, uh, this is probably a bad idea. But we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna turn our launch control back on. Acknowledged. And we're gonna launch our fighters. We're gonna launch all fighters to do search and destroy. That's what C A S A D here means. Search and destroy. And they've identified the hostile target and they're gonna go fly out and do that. All right, now we're going to go back into... Have they all launched? I think they've all launched, right? We can we can find out. Yeah, they've all they've all launched. They're all you can tell kind of like they're they're all launched. And we're going to go back into logistics and then turn our launch control back off. Acknowledged. Meanwhile, we are waiting to to land here. So here comes the Night Star. It's 50 seconds out. Interceptor uh, launched. When it's like this, when it's all staticky, that means it is currently in hyperdrive mode, and you can see it moving really fast. And if I go into our system tech ops, you can see here we're here down in the middle of the screen here, and the Night Star is heading off. But my fighters have gone over here to intercept. You can see here they are. They're about to intercept the Night Star. Oh, we can't see it. Uh, what's happening? Okay, there we go. Still getting used to how this zooms in. Ready for combat deployment. Oh, goody, Mar Marines are ready. So yeah, so this is where what's here. The Night Star. And so you can see that my uh, my fighters are going after the Night Star, and now they're firing off STS missiles, firing Firestar missiles, or missiles at the fire, uh, yeah, Firestar missiles. So they've engaged. Um, we are still heading towards Galcom HQ. So in this game, fighters can actually fight bigger shit. Like they can actually hold their own a bit, especially if you're putting them all out there. The the, the, the fighters in this game are are pretty muscly. Um, I've never flown one. I haven't flown one yet, but I think 
I might try to... Uh oh Okay, that little bit of static means that um, something's happening. I think that means... Is that specifically that someone's trying to board my ship? Or that they could, or like they're in range, or there's something. It's like a cloak is turned on. I don't Marine know. That, for I, I just know that that's not that's never a good sign when you get a little bit of static here. Now that could also be EMP going off. Oh, you know what? That might be the EMP of the Night Star trying to uh, absorb, uh, to basically to to throw off the fire stars. Oh, it looks like uh, yeah, he's gone. They've got a clean scan now. Now, I could control this ship manually if I wanted to, but I've rarely done that. I am really shit at it. I prefer to try to get the autopilot to do that. Oh, okay. Star Cruiser and a Generis. What the heck is that? It's that thing. Oh yeah, okay, so he's jamming. They're, they're, they're firing on, uh, they're firing on the thing. You can tell that's them because it says Generis and then FC4, 3, 2, 1. And then the STS Firestars are out there. Those STS Firestars, ship-to-ship -ship missiles. Now let's take a look at our TAC Ops. Acknowledged. You see the Star Cruisers heading over that away. Yep. Yeah, Star Cruisers going out. All right. We are getting in close now. Galcom HQ is right there within range. Okay, let's go ahead and dock. Clear to dock. That's uh, Alt D to dock. Don't know if there's a command to dock on the menus. Okay, so here we are. Now we're going to go to Tradcom. And we are going to uh, look at normal minerals. So here's our radine, plutonium, and iridium. So we want to buy up some radine. I'm going to buy up my plutonium back up to 100. Um, we haven't really used the radine because we haven't used the hyper jump, hyperdrive yet. But what we can do now, okay, we go to weapons and we're looking for the mines. Uh, they are somewhere in here. There they are. These are two mines. Okay, so notice that the, the value here, they're pretty valuable. So I can sell all five of those. And then now I've got 100k down here. Uh, I didn't, I had uh, like 500k or something before. Some some smaller, or no, this one, no, I had like, yeah, 500k now is a million. Um, what else can we sell? I think we're, we're what was I told? Uh, we want to sell, uh, all right. Oh, see, yeah, so the combat kits, we're down to 45. That's because I prepped five marines for combat. So we need to kind of keep these stocked up so that I can continue prepping them, keeping them ready. So now the neuter packs we can sell those apparently because they don't get eaten very frequently. So we, uh, I was told, told I, I read to bring it down to about 200. That makes me nervous. I don't know how quickly these de deplete, so I'm not going to go down to 200. I'll go down to 300. I suspect it's really not that fast. It's certainly not as fast as anything else because I had nobody's eaten a single one yet. And I and but I don't know how how quickly hunger rises in this game. So I've never lived that long. Uh, so we're gonna drop this down to just about three hundred. We don't make a lot of money off of it, but it also does relieve us of some cargo space there. All right, what else can we get rid of? The vac packs I think is for getting into shuttles and going on onto planet surfaces and stuff like that. So we got our normal minerals. Oh, that's right. We need to we need to get some more radium. So another thing we're, we're it's suggested to get up to about twenty five hundred on this, and that way we will unlike we're unlikely to ever really run out. Uh, obviously, we can always buy more if we get to a station and buy more. But uh, wow, this is uh, eating up my money quite a bit. So maybe I'm not going to go to full well. Maybe I should go to 2,500? I don't know. I'm feeling a little nervous here. Because I was also told by, you know, it was also, I also read, I'm going to go to, two, I'm going to go to 2,000. I'm just going to do that. I also read that um, it, you want to buy like spare parts and stuff and sell them. 
So uh, let's see if I can find it. Yes, here. Okay, so under info, it says the inflation level. So this is basically the, uh, the, the differential. This is the pricing differential. It is on a station by station level or possibly a system by system level. Not 100% sure about that. Uh, but at the very least, it's station by station. It's not commodity by commodity. And this means that it is 1% below the galactic average, the galactic 0%. Other places go up and other places are lower. And so you want to buy at a at a zero or below area and sell at a zero or higher one, you know, higher than than you bought it, obviously. Uh, that's a dumb thing to say. But basically, it's the inflation level that you're looking at. Um, so let's go ahead and buy some spare parts. That was one of the things that it was suggested. Uh, can I buy? I can't buy that. Maybe I'll buy some armor repair units or something or I don't know. They said buy, well, the, the, the price doesn't matter so much um, because it's it's all percentages. Uh, it's quantity that's really going to be the thing. Um, so let's get some AI interfaces. Let's just uh, load up on those. Get as many as we can. There we go. We've still got about four, 4K, so, well, well, we'll stop there. I'll just, I'll, I'll actually just set this to 50 just for a nice even number. And then we're going to sell, well, actually we'll set it to 51 because we had one. So we'll just sell 50 whenever we get to where we're going and see how that does. Okay, and I was told that the place to go, uh, let's also go here, go to Navitron. I was told that the place to go is down to Lirius here. So we start out in Earth here. We need to get to Jupiter which will then get us to Pluto, or can we get to Pluto? No, no, that's Pluto over here. We get to Jupiter, and then from Jupiter to Lirius. So that's the plan. And then we can sell that stuff. So here we go, boom. We're out. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't mean to do that. I don't know what that's about. Is that how that works? Can I? Activating Navitron computer. Can I set a destination? Oh, okay, that's fun. Uh, current destination, Lyris, Sirius, okay. Uh, can I do that? Oh, there we go. All right, so apparently uh, that's how I can do it. I did not know that, I just learned that. Wow, you're blowing my mind in real time, game. Okay, so there's two kinds of, uh, of af uh, afterburner, uh, two kinds of autopilot. Green autopilot means just for travel. Red autopilot means travel and other engagements. So you can go through a, a jump gate. You can go into combat that way. But if you're just in green autopilot, it will only do travel autopilot. It won't do uh, automatic uh, actions. Uh, okay. So now our hyperdrive is, is dropping down. We can't get out of hyperdrive. Uh, manually, we have to wait for it to drop to zero. And it'll always go from 100 to zero. It'll always take essentially that same amount of time. Your speed, your distance to travel will, deter will determine how fast you go, more or less. But I think that the hyperdrive speed will always, the, the hyperdrive um, 100 to zero will always take the same amount of time, I think. Not 100% on that. But for right now, what I want to do while we're waiting, we're going to go to Tack Ops and watch ourselves. Here we go. We're going up to there. And where are... Okay, so there's our... Sh our fighters are over there. They're attacking the shuttle, I think? That's interesting. from hyperspace. All right, and there is... There is the... Uh, the jump gate to Jupiter. And once we get out of here, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set my my uh, my fighters to escort me. That's not me. Uh, this is me, the Ark. So now, if I look at my TAC ops, they should, yep, they're heading back to me. Here they come. There they go. So they're going to escort me so that when I get through here, they'll be with me on the other side. I'm pretty sure that if I go through to Jupiter, but I leave them on Search and Destroy in Earth, they'll stay in Earth. They won't come to me. 
I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's the way it works. Meanwhile, here's something that I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Tac Ops, and I'm going to send out a probe. I have a couple of probes. I'm actually going to put uh, put myself on hold here. That pauses the game here uh, while I'm in Tac Ops so that I can talk about what I'm doing here. So I have a bunch of probes. You could have up to ten, it looks like, but I've only got six in, in, in my ship right now. These first two are long-range probes. These two are medium, and these last two are short-range probes. They basically will give you visibility on systems that you're not currently in and tell you what's going on in them. So I'm going to send a probe out. Probe I'm going to launch these two probes. And then I'm going to send this one to probe jump him at... Uh, I'm going to send him to Mars. And I'm going to jump this one over to... Well, I'm actually going to put him in Jupiter with me. Um, that way... When, I'm, when I get out of there, the probe will still be in there. And I just put it, the other one in Venus just because, you know, why not? Shits and giggles. All right, back to on hold. And here we go. We're still slowly making our way through. This game is a whole lot of slow action interspersed with absolutely frantic death dealing. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm decent enough at all of this part. At just, you know, being super slow and doing my thing, going on, you know, doing this. Getting into combat, though. Holy moly. Whenever I, my ship gets involved in combat, I just straight up die. Um, Alright, so we're going in here. There we go. We're in here now. Navigation yep. here we are. Data. Now we're in Jupiter. Oh, and there's a bad guy in here. We gotta wait until our screen re resets. But we can see FC1 is out Tactical there. Our update. guys are flying out. FC4, FC3. Okay. Now our hyperdrive is recharging. Now, if I want to, I can show you now, uh, if I go into Logistics, Power, look at my rating. It was 2000, it's now 1942. It took us that much to hyperdrive to the jump point, um, and then we just floated through to the other side. We don't take up rating going through the jump points, but we do when we're going into hyperdrive, so. Acknowledged. All right, here we are. Let's go ahead and turn, uh, turn uh, off the autopilot. I think that's what I can do. Um, do I want to do anything here? Probably should have kept them on. Let's do that. Okay. So now we're in Jupiter. This is Jupiter here. We're down here at the bottom. We've got ourselves, our long-range probe, you can see. Uh, we've got a long-range probe out here somewhere. And our all of our fighters. And they are kind of flying around me. There's one over there, there's one down there, and so on. And this is them. They're, they're in escort mode right now. Think that's why they're blinking? Pretty sure that's why they're blinking, not 100% sure. But, uh, our next stop... Okay, so if we go to the Navatron... We are currently in Jupiter slash Sol. Jupiter of Sol. Now we still want to go to Lyrius. I think I shouldn't have turned off my waypoint. I don't know how that all works, but... There we go. Okay, there is we. There we go. Uh oh, there's a bad guy out here. Two sentinels. They're about to come in. All right. I'm holding down. Oh, well, I'm selecting the Alt key so that I can. Uh... Okay. Did they leave? Where's this guy? If you if you hit the Alt key. You can use the mouse to control your movement. And then holding shift lets you do left and right, or the yaw. Otherwise, it's just a roll. And then alt to stop. Now, this inner ring here in my radar is in front of me, and the outer ring is behind me. Okay, so somebody's been attacked up there. Did, did, was that my guys? Let's, let's find out. I think my guys attacked. Acknowledged. Oh, my probe is going somewhere weird. Oh yeah. 
they are fighting over there. You can see. Interesting. Okay. One of my probes is going somewhere weird. Where the heck are you going? It currently, oh, I guess he's just kind of, it's just kind of moving around. Okay. These interceptors, these are uh, friendlies. These are Terran friendlies. They're flying around. Over here, we've got my escorts and then a couple of ship-to-ship -ship missiles that are out and about flying around, being attacking something. So because I was here and the enemy approached me, my escorts went and uh, went out to, to attack. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done that. Um, okay, so did I set my waypoint? Yeah, let's go ahead I and... Drive activated. There we go. So the way missiles work in this game, uh, you have this ability to jam. Uh, it's called the EMD, uh, Electronic Missile Defense. And it uses up something, I'm not 100% sure, but basically the more missiles you throw at something, the more likely you are to get through the EMD. At some point, the EMD essentially fails, and then the missiles that, have, that, pass, that, that, that follow up will hit it. Um, so that's what they're saying. Oh, they're jamming, so that means that those missiles are not likely to hit. But if you just keep punching through with multiple missiles, eventually the EMD will shut down, uh, and you'll you'll get your hit. All right. So we're 30 minutes into this episode, but since this is episode one, I'm gonna let myself keep going for a little bit longer. Um, Especially since we're in the middle of some stuff here, just getting to where we want to go. Acknowledged. So I'm I am getting here close to uh, coming into the serious system. Oh, and there's an enemy. A couple of enemies around me. Emerging from hyperspace. The warmonger. Oh boy, I don't want him to do that. See these war? Oh, you can't see it right now because it's still coming in. What about this guy? What is this? That's a sun flash. He's 30 seconds out. The warmonger is 38 seconds out. But we're heading into the Sirius system over here. We're we're going through this funky, funky green thing, which is, just fills me with existential dread. I gotta say. But so that's our probe, one of our probes, but then all of our FCs are out there. Retrieving. Boom. Navigation okay, now we're in Sirius. This is the first time I've successfully made it to Sirius. I gotta say, this is exciting. Alright, so these guys are gonna jump in, I think, to, to come to me because I, I they're supposed to be, uh, yeah, they're coming to the Sirius system. They're supposed to be uh, escorting me. All right, so here we are now in Sirius, which I, like I said, I've never managed to get to. This is fun. Uh, we are in Lirius. Oh, there's a sun flash. What the heck are you? There's that guy. Oh, come on. Am I going to get it? Am I going to get my ass kicked? I'm probably going to get my ass kicked. All right, let me uh, turn some missiles on, designate to target that. Target acquisition. Target acquisition. Target acquisition. Missile launched. Target acquisition. Target acquisition. Target acquisition. Target acquisition. Oh, he's, he's about to leave. He's trying to leave. Missile launched. Yep, there he goes. He's getting away. Those are our missiles going after him there. And the FC-4 is going after him, so let me just slow down. Okay, well, we scared him off. Hey, that was a, that's a success, right? And then all of my guys are just gone after him now. Freaking brilliant. Okay, so what I did there, you can see here you've got these missile, missiles, and you can designate what's called a fatal target. Fatal is some acronym, Derek Smart loves acronyms, for basically an enemy target that you can, uh, that you can uh, a, a target so that when the missile come when you come into range the missile will automatically fire or you can select the missile like i do here 
and then fire it yourself. Um, but I, I don't, I don't like to do that because I fucking suck at it. But now this one is empty because our our fire stars. It looks like we're out of fire stars. Let me take a look here. If I go into logistics and if I go to tactical and look at my loadout here, look for missiles. Yeah, so we've got a couple of analogs, a couple of fire stars, five questers, five star flashes, vagrants. I don't really know anything about these, I'll be honest with you. I don't have enough base space. What does that mean? Does that mean I don't... Oh, do I not... Oh, I don't have any weapon slots. What? Am I out of miss? I don't know how... Okay, I'm going to have to learn how that works. I feel like it means I'm out of missiles. I've only got two fire stars. Oh, okay, so here it is. So I have two fire stars, but my loadout at my command uh, craft specifies three fire stars. So this is my loadout, but I don't actually have three fire stars. So if I, maybe if I look and see how many analogs do I have? And I don't honestly know anything about these different weapons. I should probably find a way to look that up. Uh, I don't have any analogs available. Uh, don't have any, uh, per what are these Perseus thingies? Maybe I can do, do a Perseus. Because right now, I guess, Okay, these are the ones that are... Well, Firestar... Quantity to transfer? What does that mean? Oh, is that... Oh! Oh, okay, so that... that guess that transfers to my ready rack or something? To my weapon bay? Uh, oh, yeah, it goes to the weapon bay. That's it. There we go. So that moves those fire stars to the weapon bay. I'm learning, I'm learning. My fire star is set to have my 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 loadout is set to have three fire stars, so that's my full loadout. But now my weapon bay has a couple more fire stars in it. Maybe. Yay! Look at that, my fire. See, okay. Now, this is where I, what I was talking about. How Derek Smart has created a game that is exactly what he wants, and what he wants is a simulation of of this uh, of the logistics of the tactical stuff like all of that like the 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 flight model is not especially realistic the graphics aren't super awesome I mean they're great they're they're fun for what they are um, and in fact Universal Combat has a much better UI than the previous ones did um, but what he really is good at what he is really really I cannot stress this enough really good at is expressing the feel of control. Oh, we somebody killed a uh, sunflash. Um, a feeling the control, like the the precision. It's as if what we were here doing here is like a is like Microsoft Flight Simulator, right? Uh, all of the dials and the buttons and everything are there. You have actual direct control over things like. On, a, on an airplane, you have like the de-icing button or whatever. In this game, you have to manage how your loadout looks, what your missiles look like, wh what you have in your cargo, whether or not your cargo goes to your ready rack, and things like that. It's just, I love it. That that is so satisfying to me. Uh, okay, so my my ships are my my fighters are out there um, escorting. They're, I wonder if they're running low on uh, any of their. Um, or if they got hurt in any way. Um, logistics, crafts, FC. These guys, he's still at 100%. Okay, this guy's got dinged a little bit. This guy's fine. This guy's fine. So number two got dinged a little bit. If he drops too much, we'll need to bring him back to be repaired. And then in order to repair them, we have to assign flight engineers to repair the ships, and it takes about 10 real-time minutes to repair the ships. Meanwhile, you obviously cannot launch that ship again. Um, 
So, let's see. What can I do? Load out. Let me check to see. Is there a way to check? No missiles on board that one. None on board that one. None on board that one. Oh, oh, means no. It means that the ship is not on board, so I can't actually see the, uh, can't affect the loadout. Uh, so the real question for me then is, um, okay, ah, uh, here we go. This is the launch. This is the, okay. This is what I want. I wanted to see, okay, the reactor charge is at 68%. Um, the combat pilot is deployed with these two pilots, Scorpion and Nightwing. Scorpion has an AI of 17, Nightwing has an AI of 20. Honestly, the co-pilot, these guys should be flipped. Uh, I should flip them when I when they get back. Uh, FC2 is injured here a little bit, but he's got the same reactor charge because they all went out at the same time. I can't tell if there's a way to see what the loadout, whether or not they've got weapons, like what their weapon is. Do they have missiles? They must have missiles. They were firing them before. How do I find out if they still have a load? Um, I'm not sure I can. I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. We're here. Um, what are my guys doing? Uh, let's take a look at my TAC Ops. Acknowledged. TAC Ops computer. Okay, so where are... Where the heck are my... Oh, they're all over here fighting off that interceptor and the battle cruiser yikes that seems dangerous well okay here's what I'm gonna do what I want to do is I want to take my guy to fly him to a friendly is that what is that is that a station hyperdrive activated I guess so Yeah, I think that's a station. Oh, sounds like the sound has glitched out a little bit. That's all right. Once we uh, once we come out of hyperdrive, I will go ahead and pause uh, this, and I will well, I will end the episode. Um, and uh, and then the next time uh, when we get back to this, we will go ahead and dock at the station and sell off the stuff that we bought um, and uh, hopefully make a little bit of money because I have been told through watching those videos and reading the, the, the um, sort of the guide uh, Lirius, the stations here have a 30% inflation which means we will make money This is our range here, 3,000 to this target. Emerging from hyperspace. Somebody's having a fight down here. Oh, that's those are my FCs. Oh, how do they look? Hull 200, Hull 200, Hull 200. Yeah, they're all okay. They're all still okay. I'm a little worried. Oh, well, now the battle cruiser's gone. I was worried that they were going to get into some into a bit of a scrape there. Well, we're actually almost at at the at the rate, so we'll um we'll actually land, sell the stuff, and then we'll end the episode. Yeah, we're about fifty what fifty kilometers out? What is that? No, that's. Yeah, I think that's 50 kilometers out because it goes down to meters. And this IFF means that the thing I'm targeting is a friend. Uh, SAS is this sort of ship alert system. CAS is the alerts for the, the area that I'm in. So if this goes red, this means that there's a ship out there, there's like an enemy out there. SAS means that there's a threat on my ship. Uh, which usually means that I have been boarded. Now, cloaked ships uh, can get in close and board me. I think because I had the teleporter turned off, I can't be. Bo I couldn't be boarded. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, we're gonna turn the AP off, and we're just gonna approach.
I can only go so fast though because I have my engines. Uh, when you're when you're in autopilot, I think it turns your engines all the way up. Uh, but normally your engines are at 50% when when the game starts. So I'm gonna bring them up to 100. Uh, it does reduce my available power, but it does mean that I can get a little bit, a little bit faster. Oh, there's an enemy out there somewhere. But we just gotta get in a little bit closer. Oh, and I also didn't turn my turrets on, did I? PTA oh, there now they are. Activated. Okay, just in case, because my turrets will automatically target and attack uh, enemy uh, ships nearby. But they have to be turned on, uh, and that actually is going to be an issue now because I think my uh, my power, yeah, my available power is 37 because my engines are on at full. Acknowledged. That's a cool looking station, I'll be honest with you. Pretty freaking cool looking. Never been here. Never survived this long. This is a, this is a milestone for me. All right, nine kilometers, eight, seven, six. Oh, there's enemies out here. I glad, I'm glad I have my, uh, my fighters. Three. Two, one, I gotta get within 500. And there we are, now I'm just gonna slow myself down to a stop. And I'm gonna dock. There's something out there. Uh-oh, well at least I'm gonna dock now. All right, let's, let's turn my engines down. There we go. And go to the Tradcom. How are we on rating? 1822. Yeah, we're still good. But we had some, we we bought some spare parts. Let's sell these. Let's see how much we make. I had one. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, because we're at an inflation level of 29 percent. So that's a differential of 30 percent pricing. That's great. Now I don't want to buy any of my materials here because they're going to be more expensive. Um, but, do, 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 should I re get, re reload some of these things? There's so many different kinds of weapons. Look at this. These fire started with Perseus. I don't know anything about these. I, I, there's a fact somewhere if I can find it. It's just, it's supposed to be on the website on, on the, uh, uh, on the game, uh, Derek Smart's, um, uh, company website but it, they don't appear to be so I'm gonna have to figure that out but yeah so we're gonna go ahead and log off and get out of here and then we're gonna go ahead and save the game and we're gonna save it here save it to we made it yay and there we are I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're gonna try to maybe get into some fights down the road ourselves. We'll see. We're we're mostly gonna go flying around and be Mr. Patrol guys as the military commander that we are. And uh, the the advice is uh, from from people I've read uh, is to do some trade routing stuff and basically uh, make up enough make enough money that you can upgrade your ship so that it's more easily defensible and you don't just die like tissue paper, uh, which is what always happens to me. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.